all down. Yeah, you know, Ralph, this is big. I can't wait to talk to Marty about that. And all week long, we've been discussing the cost of racing. Well, get out the NASCAR credit card. Today, we are ringing up some serious charges. Oh, it gets expensive in a hurry. NASCAR teams are always blowing smoke. And I don't just mean about how much horsepower their engines are making. I'm talking about wind tunnels, a very important tool when it comes to turning quick lap times. NASCAR Nation's John Willenborg joins us live from Mooresville, North Carolina, with a look at wind tunnels. Thanks, Ralph. You know, you're talking costs, and we are here at the wind tunnel in Mooresville. And talk about a big cost. Look at the size of this thing. It's really not something that, that people, I think, have a good idea of how big and complex they are. Obviously, this is one of the big parts of the budget nowadays in NASCAR. I'm joined now by Gary Aker, who is the owner and designer of this wind tunnel. Now, this is brand new as of about a year and a half ago. Before this wind tunnel was here, where did the, where did the NASCAR guys have to go to get test on? Well, they went to the Lockheed Tunnel uh, near Atlanta, Georgia, uh, to the GM Tunnel up in Detroit, to the NRC Tunnel in Ottawa, Canada, and then also to the uh, Langley Old Dominion Tunnel in uh, Hampton, Virginia. <laughs> That's quite a trek. Obviously, these things aren't a dime a dozen. Why are there so few of these around? Well, I think you just said it. They're not a dime a dozen. But see, all of the other tunnels were really built for other purposes. We decided if we wanted to build a tunnel for race cars, we would specialize in that. And where else to put it but in Mooresville? But putting it here is, is a little bit harder. Obviously, what, what's something like this cost? I know you don't want to give specifics about your baby here, but give us an example of maybe a comparable facility. Well, uh, a full-scale wind tunnel that's more conventional in design might cost 40 to $60 million today. Uh, we built ours for considerably less, but we won't talk about how much less. <laughs> obviously, but that, that's a huge, huge uh, cost for these guys to eat. And obviously, it's got to be expensive to get some time in here. It's not just something you can walk in and roll your car. And what's it cost for an hour, and, and then what kind of sessions do these guys do? It's $1,290 per hour. Uh, we usually sell 10-hour sessions, so that turns out to be about $12,900 for a 10-hour session. And for some of the big teams, how often are they here spending $12,000, $13,000 at a time? Well, we, we don't want to get too specific in our customers' information, but let's just say they're here uh, more than a few times per month. Oh, man. That has really got to get expensive for some of these teams. But, you know, when you're fighting over inches in NASCAR Nextel Cup and when victory comes by this much, you've got to find it in one of these wind tunnels. Back to you guys in the studio. Yeah, that's true, John. Hey, Gary, a question for you. You've been talking about costs. Now that that tunnel is right there kind of in a lot of these teams' backyards, what kind of cost-saving measure is that for them, the fact that they don't have to go to places like Georgia and Detroit? Well, uh, you know, I used to work for Hendrick Motorsports, and I know that we had to take the King Air and fly it up, fly it back. We had to have hotel rooms, rental cars, you name it, plus all of the high-priced people who are out of town for extended periods of time. So um, some people thought that the cost of going to and from was almost equal to the cost of renting the time. Yeah. All right, great stuff. Thanks a lot, guys. Hey, John, don't go far. Get blown away. We're going to come back to you a little bit later in the show. And, you know, that's not just a 9-to-5 thing. I mean, those tunnels are going all the time. And the team spent hours upon hours just searching for the smallest advantage in there so the dollars just get chewed up in a hurry. And that's why that manufacturer support that we were talking about earlier in the week, when you have a factor behind you that will help cover some of those expenses, it's such a huge advantage over some of the independent teams. Yeah, and Gary hit it on the head, the fact that, that the guys, the engineers, the team guys, they don't have to, you know, go far. They can sleep in their own bed at night. That's a huge advantage. Yeah. All right, well, coming up, we're going to have a lot more for you from that wind tunnel in the backyard of those teams. But even with that technology, the cost going up today in our big story, part three, you will hear the effect of all the changes they've had on the bottom line, which, of course, is a team's bank account. Indian deals are millions. Uh, you spend probably close to the millions on aero. So, I mean, just those two big things. And then your personnel, of course, to keep up with everybody is in the millions. So right there, it eliminates 99% of the people, you know. So it's, it's a lot of money. Welcome back to NASCAR Nation. You're all access pass to all things NASCAR. Earlier in the show, we talked about wind tunnels and how much money teams spend on their wind tunnel programs and their never-ending search for an aero advantage. We're now going to head back to Mooresville, North Carolina, where our own John Willenborg is standing by to tell us more about how wind tunnels actually work. Thanks, Ralph. I'm not only standing by, I'm standing in the path uh, of the wind here inside the wind tunnel. You can see one of the Bill Davis Racing uh, Dodges behind me. Now, I'm joined by David Salazar, who's actually one of the operators here at the wind tunnel. Now, David, one of the things I noticed is that the air is obviously traveling this way, but the fans are behind us back there. 
So the air is actually being sucked. Tell us about that. Uh, they suck the air in because it creates less turbulent flow over the car. They want a nice, uh, uniform, steady flow over the car. So if the fans were in front, it would be disturbing the air so you wouldn't get accurate readings on the car? Uh, correct. All right, now let's talk a little bit about this car. Now I'm going to scoot back and have you move back here. Now if you notice on the car here, you can actually see the wheels turning. Dave, if you come in here, now why is the wheel turning? Why is that so important to have on one of these cars? Uh, basically, the, the wheel spinning actually creates a different flow over there and underneath the car. And uh, it's going to give them different results. And also, it's a better real, world, real race condition situation for testing these cars. So yeah, Dave was telling me earlier, the air actually changes how the air comes out of the wheel well and goes under the car. So they actually have a, a machine that spins both the front and the rear wheels. There's no engine being used. Now, these are supposed to be stock cars. So let me ask, what can they find in a wind tunnel? And tell me about how NASCAR checks these cars. Basically, NASCAR has a lot of templates that they use on the car. They have a long template and templates that go across the car. Uh, but there's areas in the car where there's not a template, so basically these teams can kind of work on these areas, kind of like a gray area where they can try to get uh, better downforce or reduce the drag of the car. So teams can actually find some downforce if they stay away from those templates. NASCAR actually lets them play with the other parts of the cars, and that's why they're spending so much time in these wind tunnels. So, yeah, very, very cool to be in here. Now, the air at max speed, how fast can, I mean, these cars go 200 miles an hour on the track. How fast does the wind go in here? We test at 130 miles an hour. And why not 200? Uh, basically, we can get the same test results, and uh, you can uh, get the same data for 200 as you do 130. Very cool. Well, definitely learned a lot while I'm out here. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, John, thanks. And a big thank you to the guys at Bill Davis Racing for allowing us in there while the meter was still ticking, and more of those dollars are going over the hood of that car. Tomorrow night here on NASCAR Nation, we will unveil another Beyond the Wheel series. This week, our talented crew focused their lenses on the action that took place this past weekend in Atlanta with the help of Casey Mears. And what a weekend it was. Here's a preview of what's coming up tomorrow. It's a chess match from the get-go. 3143, leader of 3120. 64, 82, 76 behind. 31 time again, that's proud of you here, but you're all right. Still down there. Size of 31. Clear, clear. 16 the leader. 31, 45, 50 behind you. Go get it, man. I know you can do it. Beyond the Wheel comes your way every Thursday night after a Nextel Cup weekend here on NASCAR Nation. So make sure you join us tomorrow night to see the entire Beyond the Wheel series from this week in Atlanta. Right after the break, the citizens voice their opinions on Carl Edwards' chances of contending for the title. We'll revisit the circumstances that led to a Bush Series ride for Matt Kenseth and shooting hoops with Bush Series rising star Reed Sorensen in home base. That's all just ahead. NASCAR Nation will be right back. The Wind Fuel Winner's Edge Night continues.